Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This is your all video for May 29th, 2017. Happy birthday. Go to Seth Rollins, turn 30, 31 on Sunday, while UK star Joseph Connor turned 30. WWE legend Kamala turned 67, and Headbanger Wash turned 46. Nia Jax turned 32 years old, while WWE performance center coach Steve Carino turned 44, Brian Kendrick turned 38. Horace Walker turned 31, Nitro Girl Spice turned 44, and Pete Gass turned 47. WWE US Champion Kevin Owens is featured on in his uh, new public service announcement, reminding fans to buckle up and click it or ticket while when driving. Uh, WWE and several superstars are supporting Red Nose Day again this year. Which is a campaign to raise money for to fight child poverty. Full details can be found at rednoseday.org and some photos of uh, Stephanie McMahon, Grant Ballard, and others. For you. This next video link is from the WWE Trials in Dubai at the Opera House, uh, which WWE is calling their most diverse tryout ever, featuring more than 30 athletes from around the globe. Possible. Okay. There you go. That, that link for that. Spoiler alert. Well, Randy Orton taking uh taking time off from uh, live events starting June the fifth, which is scheduled to be uh, from uh, this week's back now. He did not work the live events this past weekend. It appears that Orton is taking time off in July as well. As Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jinder Mahal. Has been booked for some non TV events. Mattel will be releasing the debut look of Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan, or The Miz as an elite series action figure in the near future. WWE's website has a new poll asking fans which debut look should be immortalized as a figure Bryan's 2010 look, Orton's 2002 look, or Miz's 2006 look. Results will be revealed. When the figure is announced, after attending Metallica earlier, the uh, Metallica concert earlier this month, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H brought their kids to the Zach Brown Band concert in New Hampshire last night. As Triple H tweeted a, a photo of Brown, I think I have the picture. In a recent interview, Road Warrior Animal said that. In his opinion, the Dudley Boys will never be considered legendary like the Legion of Doom. Let me sum this up, Animal said. I got nothing against Devon or Bubba. Great guys. Love them. They were good back in ECW in their early years. I'm going to say this, but there's the, here's the bottom line. You can say you're the greatest because you won the WWE Championship so many times. All the TNA Championships. But come in my shoes where you've won 14 different world championships. I'm talking Australia, Mexico, six different Japanese company belts, AWA, NWA, WCW, WWF, WWE. Right there, you got 12 championships. Not only are you going to going down to Portland and winning those titles, you're going down to Mexico City. I've been part of 14 different belts. Even Hawk and I, and I been at least 10, 12 different titles. The only team ever to take the inter international belt out of Japan and defend them against the AWA, NWA, and not WWF. But those titles and WCW titles and made the international belts famous. They ain't done that. I have nothing against the Dudleys. But let's be real to all the fans out there. You've got to be real when it's time to be real and honest. Animal continued, listen, Hulk Hogan is the greatest single thing to ever happen to the wrestling business, and I'll be the first one to say it. When something is true, you have to say it. The best entertainer to ever come out of this business is The Rock. Number one best entertaining guy ever, and has, has set the, rest, the wrestling standard that nobody will ever match. The guy did $170 million in, in profit this year alone. No wrestler will ever do that ever in movies. I'm the first one to say it. So the Dudleys come out here and say that they, that kind of crap, they really need to think about it before they open up their mouth and say, okay, 
Did we really do anything that was better than the Road Warriors? The answer is simple. No. Are they great? Yeah, they're great. But they're not the Road Warriors. They're not going to go down in history as a legendary status. Who doesn't like waking up to the Hall of Famer saying something controversial about a future Hall of Fame tag team? At the end of the day, it gives us something to talk about on a slow news day. But the claim is pretty ridiculous. In their era, the World Warriors won everything there was to win. In their area, era, the Dudley Boys did the same. But uh, both are on the tag team Mount Rushmore. Noted back in uh, late April how former WWE superstar Sean X. Pac Waltman was arrested at the airport in Los Angeles, was trying to fly to the UK for an Indian appearance. Waltman was charged with felony drug possession after authorities found cannabis chocolate bars, two, H two THC liquid cigarettes, and a total of 38 methamphetamine capsules. They believe Waltman was bringing the drugs to the UK to sell them, but he insisted that he was still clean and that he was not selling drugs. Waltman claimed at the time that the capsules were used to treat a yeast infection that had been that he had been dealing with, not illicit drugs. In an update, the charges had been dropped. Sam Roberts noted on Twitter that the district attorney rejected the case. Waltman confirmed that the charges had been dropped in a new interview with TMZ Sports, which you could go to TMZ to uh, get the vi uh, video. Or you can go to this link here, too. The pills were tested, and the, the test proved that the pills were not illegal substance. Waltman noted that the capsules were not, were not returned to him. Waltman also talked about the government wasting money on the case, knowing he was innocent from the start, and it was more in the in interview. At the link. Well, WWE posted a video with Corey Graves looking at six AJ Styles matches at this link. We, we wish we could see Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Rey Mysterio, Ric Flair, Rock, and Edge, which I can do on my dream match account. NXT from Full Sail University from May 31st. They were taped on May 25th, 2017. Percy Watson, Tom Phillips, and Nigel McGillis come out for commentary, and Percy got more booze than usual. Tommaso Ciampa came out on crutches to Y Chance. He invites Gianni Gargano to the ring, but says he's not here tonight. Ciampa acknowledges the injury he suffered the Thursday before takeover when, when they lost. He knew he was going to be out for a while. He figured Gargano would replace him and he would become an afterthought. So he could get, uh, so he couldn't let that happen. He said takeover was supposed to be DIY's moment, but it turned out to be his own moment. Ciampa says he is professional wrestling. Ciampa put everyone on notice and says he will be the most dangerous man in pro wrestling when he returns. WWE UK champion Pete Dune defeated Danny Birch. Okay, Mar Mar Martin Stone. Dune cut a promo after the match and ran down Tyler Bate. Caesar Bonini. Bonani defeated Andre Cien Almas with a roll up out of nowhere. Thea Trinidad was brought to ringside to watch Almas from, from the crowd. Roger Strong and Cassius Ono defeated Eric Young and Eric Alexander Wolf after No Way Jose returned to help fight off the tri uh, triple team from Sanity. Nikki Cross was not there either. Danny Warrior come, came out to present WWE, a WWE Hero Award to a teacher from Orlando for her charity work. June 7th episode, Tucker Knight and Otis Dojovic defeated Laura Sullivan formerly known as uh, Dylan Miley, and his partner, and his enhancement talent. Paper Machinery got a good reaction. Lars attacked his partner after the match. Peyton Royce defeated Sarah Logan, a.k.a. Sarah Bridges. Crazy Mary Dobson with Billy Kay at ringside. Hideo Otami versus One Lorcan was next. The match ended in a no contest with 
when the Tommy destroyed Lorcan and hit the uh, three GTS in a row. Cassius Ono ran down to stop the Tommy, and they had words. The Tommy then slapped Ono, and Ono shoved him back. The Tommy le left as the official came down to help Lorcan to the back. No Way Jose versus Killian Dean was next. Eric Young and Exile Exile Alexander Worth came out with with Dane, but no Nikki Cross. Dane looked strong and won with his finisher. Roger Strong came out for a serious talk with the fans. He's now focused on the NXT title and says it's no longer Roddy versus the world. It's Roddy and his new family. He goes on, but NXT champion Bobby Roode interrupted with fake crying. Roode ran him down with one of Roode's best promos since coming to NXT. Telling him he has to earn a shot at his hit at his NXT. June fourteenth episode spoiler: Drew McIntyre defeated Enhancement Talent Rob Ryzen. Ember Moon returned to action and defeated Peyton Royce in a really good match. NXT Tag Team Champions: The Authors of Pain defeated Enhancement Talents Beastly Brody and Malkin. WWE Hall of Famer Paul Ellering cut a promo on Heavy Machinery after the match. Otis Dojovic and Tucker Knight came out for a face-off with Authors of Pain, but the champs backed down and left. The Velveteen Dream, Patrick Hart versus Raw Mendoza was up next. Raw Mendoza debut, the former Patrick Clark got a win with a flying elbow. The Velveteen Dream is on his way to having a strong fan base at Full Sail University. Ruby Wright versus Nikki Cross. Versus the NXT Women's Champion, Oscar the Triple Threat. Elimination match was up next. Match started slow. Nikki eliminated Ruby, Ruby by pinfall. The action uh, and the crowd picked up with Oscar and Nikki going at it. The match ended in a no contest as they brawled to the floor and to the backstage area. A ref, you suck chant started up. And the, uh, they brawled back. Into the arena by the announcers. And Nikki ended up launching herself at Oscar, and they both fall from a platform through a production area. June 21st, spoiler episode Eric Young and Alexander Wolf defeated the Ely Brothers. Sonya Deville defeated Rachel Evers. Cassius Soto versus uh, Alistair Black was your main event. They shook hands before going at it. Amazing match. Black won with a black mask to end the tapings. Correspondent said it was not sure if Ono vs. Black was for TV or if it was a dark match main event. It was also noted that some of the matches may be taped out of order, but it's possible nothing was taped for the June 21st episode. But keep you updated as, uh, as I, I get more confirmation on, on more of this. And Raw opens up with a video tribute for Memorial Day, narrated by John Cena. We go to the normal Raw intro, intro video, and I did not get any WWE main event results for that, or spoilers. Live from Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina, as Michael Colesaw welcomes us. He's joined in by Corey Graves and Hall of Famer Booker T, and they hype tonight's uh, matches. We go to the ring, out comes uh, The Miz with Maurice for a special edition of Miz TV. Miz says that they're feeling really good about the match against Intercontinental Champion Dean Ambrose at Extreme Rules on Sunday. He talks about how he went to Raw General Manager Kurt Angle to get the stipulation that will see him win the title on a disqualification. Miz goes on and introduces his guests, calling them future Raw Tag Team Champions. Out comes Cesaro and Sheamus. Miz thanks them for coming and praises them as they, the two hardest working workers in WWE. Besides himself, of course, Miz brings up the Hardys, stealing their spotlights and the titles. Sheamus and Cesaro agree it's a shame. Sheamus says an even bigger shame is how fans turned on Cesaro. A delete chant started up. Sheamus promised to break the Hardys and take back the titles on Sunday. Miz goes on about Ambrose and the IC title until the mid music hits and out comes Intercontinental Champion to a pop. Ambrose talks some, talks some trash and Miz reminds 
him, he he's outnumbered. Wondering if he's crazy or stupid. Ambrose says one thing, he is not stupid. Ambrose drops the mic and the music hits, bringing out Raw Tag Team Champions, the Hardys. Hardys and Ambrose hit the ring for a brawl. They go at it and clear the ring, sending the heels retreating. The champions stood tall and face off with their opponents as we go to commercial. Hardy is in Ambrose versus Cesaro, Sheamus, and Miz. Back for the break. Six man action underway. Hardy double teams Cesaro for a two count. Cesaro turns it around on Matt. After Sheamus runs interference, Miz comes in and works Hardy over. Sheamus is back in and Cesaro lands another cheap shot from the apron. Well, uh, they go uh, into a commercial as the champions are standing uh, stand tall to face off with their opponents as they go to commercial. Hardy's okay. Apron. Cesaro uh, uh, a cheap shot from the apron. Cesaro tagged back in and kept control of Hardy. Cesaro booted Jeff Hardy off the apron, but it backfired. And uh, gets uh, Ambrose ends up getting getting the tag. Ambrose unloads on Cesaro and sends Miz off the apron. Ambrose launches himself over the top and nails Miz on the floor. Ambrose ends up rolling through on the top rope elbow to Cesaro. Cesaro blocks Dirty Deed. Sheamus tags in. But Ambrose duck, ducks the road kick. Ambrose closes on Sheamus over, over the top. More back and forth between the two teams. Ambrose nails a swinging neck breaker on Sheamus. Ambrose goes to the top, but Miz distracts him. Sheamus crotches Ambrose and nails a high knee, sending Ambrose from the top to the floor. We go to commercial. Back from the break, Miz unloads on Ambrose with, with kicks. Ambrose ducks the roundhouse, but Miz gets the upper hand and covers for a two count. Cesaro comes in now. Miz runs around and pulls the Hardys off the apron, stopping them from tagging. Sheamus and Cesaro hit a double team white noise for a two count. Sheamus takes Ambrose to the top for a super white noise, but it's countered. Ambrose sends Sheamus to the mat and climbs up for the big elbow chop. Cesaro tags in and stops Ambrose from tagging. Ambrose hits a big clothesline on Cesaro. Miz and Jeff get tags and go at it. Jeff unloads on Miz and hits the inverted atomic drop, then the leg drop. Jeff with a drop kick. Miz blocks the twist of fate. Matt tags in. And Jeff hits poetry in motion. Matt with a side effect, but Sheamus breaks the pin. Jeff with a twist of fate on Sheamus. Cesaro takes out Jeff. Ambrose takes out Cesaro. Matt drops Miz with a twist of fate and tags in Jeff to hit the Swan Tom Bomb for the win. After the match, champions stand tall as we go to replays. We'll go to announcers to hype tonight's show. Graves is texting on his phone when he says he has to go. He quickly gets up and takes off his headset before leaving. Coleslaw and Booker look on, on confused, but Coleslaw keeps talking about the show. Still to come, segment, Alexa Bliss presents Bailey, This Is Your Life segment. Back to commercial. Back from break, and Kurt Angle is reading something on the phone. Corey Graves is there. Angle reads something about him being a disgrace and embarrassment to WWE. Something about Bismarck. Biz merch uh, to his status on a as an Olympic gold medalist. Apparently, someone is blasting Angle for his job as a general manager. Angle asks if this, if this is a, some kind of joke, and Graves says it appears to be serious. Graves loves the job Angle is doing and says he would hate for anything to come along and throw a wrench into the well oiled machine Angle is running. Angle asks who Graves. Who gave Graves the information? Graves says people tell him things and just wanted to give Angle a heads up about the information he has. And to let Angle know Graves is here to help if he can. 
Angle says if this is true, it could ruin him. Angle seemed worried as he hands the phone back to Graves and leaves. Zack Evans versus uh, Elias Sampson. We go to the ring. And we get JoJo introducing Elias Sampson, who has a special spotlight and a guitar. The drifter starts singing a song as his opponent awaits. It has my talent, Zack Evans. The bell rings and Samson stares his opponent down. They lock up and Samson goes to work with a, with a knee to the gut. Samson dominates and ends up getting the win with his snap swinging neck breaker. After a match, Samson stood tall. As Coleslaw predicted, we see his swinging neck breaker a lot more in the future. The announcers hype tonight's show as uh, Corey Graves returns to his chair. Coleslaw asks what? That was all about. And Gray said it was personal. Match commercial. Uh, thus, it's him. Gray's not liking Angle. Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe versus Bray Wyatt. Triple threat. Uh, Samoa Joe was backstage watching Phil, Phil, uh, Finn Balor's recent uh, WWE 24 special. Charlie Caruso approached. And asked him about tonight's triple threat. Joe was setting the special to better destroy ba Balor. He talks about how he knows Balor and will take him out tonight. He brings up Bray Wyatt. But the graphic flashes. And we cut to Bray Wyatt backstage. Somewhere. Wyatt cuts a promo on Joe. And says he's just like the rest. He's blind. Wyatt goes on and says only one person can defeat the Beast. Him. We see Joe White watching as Wyatt goes on about how he can beat the WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Wyatt says Balor and Joe and all the others will give into their fears and run. We're going to reign for the triple threat and out comes Finn Balor to a pop. Back to commercial. Back for the break. Some old Joe is wrapping up his entrance. Let's go out and we get Bray Wyatt for his entrance. Bell rings and Joe goes at it with Balor as Wyatt watches from ringside. Balor and Joe go at it. Joe seems, sees Wyatt clapping and brings him back in. Joe watches from ringside, but Wyatt and Balor go at it now. Balor drops Wyatt with a big kick, but Joe runs into a, into break up the pin. Joe beats Balor down with knees. Wyatt ends up tossing Balor to the floor and focusing on Joe, but Balor comes from behind and takes Wyatt to, to the corner. Balor with a shot to, to both opponents now. Wyatt nails Balor but misses the clothesline. Fan champ for Balor. But Wyatt launches himself into Balor off the ropes. More back and forth now as Joe takes Balor to the top for a superplex. But Wyatt comes over and power bombs the, them to the mat. Wyatt turns, up, turns upside down into the corner for his crab walk and taunts his opponents. Then Wyatt grabbed Balor for Sister Abigail, but Joe applied a coquina clutch on Wyatt. Wyatt went for the went down to one knee. Balor broke the clutch with a kick to the head. Balor stomped away on Joe. Balor run the ropes and nailed the big dive to Joe and Wyatt on the floor. We go to the commercial with fans cheering for Balor as he stood tall after the after the dive. Back for the break, Joe rocks Balor. Joe and Wyatt double team Balor and drop him with, with shoulders. Wyatt choked Balor as Joe looks on. They took turn on Balor. Balor fight, fought back with on Wyatt, but Wyatt dropped him from behind. Joe and uh, Wyatt kept up the double team on Balor. Joe stood tall as Wyatt posed in the corner as fans boo. Joe mushed, mushed Balor and hit, hit him with a forearm. Balor fought back on both opponents, but Joe Caught him in an inverted atomic drop. Big boot and then, then nails a senton. Wyatt go, went on and nails a senton of his own on Balor. Wyatt ended up turning on Joe and laying him out. Wyatt goes for a urinagi on Balor but is countered. Balor dropped Wyatt with an overhead kick. Balor made a comeback and unloaded on Wyatt. Balor nails a drop kick. Joe comes from behind and nails Balor with a clothesline. 
Joe goes on and drops Wyatt with a kick to the, in the corner. Balor sends Joe to the floor and knocks Wyatt off the opposite apron. Balor keeps both opponent down and out of the ring before standing tall. Balor ran around the ring and dove on Wyatt into the barrier. Balor run, ran around the ring himself again and then sent Wyatt into the barrier. Balor brought Joe back in the ring and the fans chant, this is awesome. Balor goes on and until Joe caught him with a urinagi. Joe kept, kept Balor grounded. As Balor keeps control and nailed the stomp. Balor blocked the sister Abigail and took out Wyatt. Joe blocked Sling Blade and, and tossed Balor. Sending him to the outside. Joe waited for Wyatt to get up. Wyatt turned upside down and Joe taunted. Wyatt caught Joe with a sister Abigail. But Joe rolled, rolled under the ropes. Balor comes from behind and hits Wyatt. Balor with a sling blade on Wyatt. Balor then drop kick Wyatt into the barrier. And Balor went up to the top for the coup de grace on Wyatt. Joe ran in and threw Balor out the, into the ring post in the, cor into the, in the corner. Joe covered Wyatt and stole the, stole the pin for the win. After the match, Joe to a tall. Had his hand, hand, arm raised over Wyatt as we go to replace. Joe so tall while Wyatt and Balor were down at, uh, on the outside. Seth Rollins backstage with Mike Rowe. Rollins uh, talks about his history with Rowan, but loses the friendly tone and says he owns Rowan. He owns Reigns. Rollins says it won't be personal when he puts his knee in Reigns' face tonight. It will also be about him sending a message to everyone in the Fatal Five Way match. Rollins says he's no stranger to, to changing the course of WWE history and he's looking to do it again on Sunday. With Rollins walking off. Sasha Banks in Switch Farm backstage commercial. So that matches up next. Noam Dar versus Rich Swan. Back when Rake, Alicia Fox waits in the ring with Noam Dar as we see some of the recent events leading to tonight's match. And Sunday's mixed tag match at Extreme Rules. Rich Swan was out next. He stops and waits for Sasha Banks to make her entrance. They head to, they head to, to the ring together. Bell rings and Dar attacks from behind and, and took control of the match. Swan fights back, but Dar countered and slammed him on his arm face first to the mat. For a two count, Dark up control and kept Swan grounded as Fox taunted him from ringside. Dar with more offense and he shuts Swan down again. Dar focused on the arm and took 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 it to the corner as the referee warned him. Dar ran into an elbow. Swan would have dropped to a hold. Swan made a comeback and unloaded with the offense. Swan with a two count. Swan keeps control and goes up top. But uh, Fox distracted him. From the apron, Sasha ran over and took Fox to the apron, then rammed her back into the ring apron. Swan goes up top, nails Dar with a Phoenix Splash for the win. After the match, Swan celebrated as we go to replay. Sasha joined him on the ring as they danced for the minute. So the come segment, Reigns versus Rollins in the main event, back to the commercial. Back for the break, Charlie Russo is backstage with the revival. Scott Dawson points out the Dash Wilder's wire jaw and says Revival will, will be back soon. She brings up Enzo Amore getting laid out last week, but Dawson said they haven't been around in six weeks. Charlie shows us a video from last week's Sasha Banks segment where the Revival could be seen in the background walking. Posted that about uh, that on last week's events. They admit that they were they they were here last week, but they were they work here. Why wouldn't they be here? Dawson says Enzo is a bottom feeder on Raw, and they wouldn't waste their time on Enzo. But nobody else uh, should either. The revival walked off as well. We get a look at the Brian Kendrick versus the Caratoz on a street fight from 205 Live last week. We come back to the announcer, announcers and Big Cass is confronting Graves. Asking if, if he really made a comment about Cass having something to do with Enzo getting attacked. 
Grace apologizes and says it was, it was a misunderstanding. Cass leaves as Colesaw hypes the show as we go to commercial. Calisto versus Titus O'Neil was up next. Back from the break, out comes Calisto. Titus was, was out next with, with Apollo Cruz. We see video from earlier in the day where Titus told Cruz to watch and see how it's done. The bell rings and they go at it. Calissa strikes first and uses his speed to take control with a lot of offense early on. Titus stops the little of soul but runs into a big boot. Titus overpowers Calissa and drops down onto him for a, for, for a pin. But he uses a hand, handful of tights to get the pin. After the match, Titus stood tall as Calissa ar argues with the referees. We, get re we go to replace. Titus started to brag to Cruz. Cruz joins Titus in the ring for a selfie. After the replays, the Titus brand is ready to go party. Alexa Bliss backstage walking, match commercial. Back from the break, we get the Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss hyping. The Kendo stick on a pole match with Bailey on Sunday. Pokes at Bailey for probably trying to hug the Kendo stick. Bliss goes on about how soft Bailey is and says she had to dig deep to find out who Bailey really was. She introduces This Is Your Life. And focuses on the table of various items from Bailey's life. We see an older woman in, in the ring with a younger woman and younger woman, a younger man on the opposite side of the table. Bliss starts mocking some of the items on the table, including a trophy in a yearbook. Bliss introduces the older woman next, fourth grade teacher Mrs. Flapper. The, the teacher talked about how Bailey was such a good student. Bailey sat in the front row with her dad. Her dad was there because Bailey cried when she when she was apart from, from him. Bliss introduced the young, younger woman next. Bailey's childhood best friend, Tracy Al Avelina. She talked about how they were good friends until Bailey never wanted to hang out because she'd rather watch Raw or SmackDown. Fans are bored of the segment now. The young man is Bailey's ex-boyfriend, Phil Johnson. He says, Bailey was a nice girl. Bliss wants to know about the first date. Phil says, it was okay, but kind of strange because her dad was always there. He says, they almost had a moment one night where they were going to kiss. His eyes were closed, but nothing happened. He opened his eyes, and there was her father, Phil. He says, he only dated Bailey because he wanted to get close to Tracy. Tracy can't believe it. She always thought Phil was out, out of her league, but she always liked him. Booker says that this is hard, hard to watch, and it really is. Tracy and Phil kiss as Bliss calls him them disgusting. Bliss says this. This is Bailey's life. Music hits out comes Bailey. She rushes the ring, but Bliss st stomps on her. Bailey comes back and gets, gets the upper hand. Bliss decks her with the right hand. Bailey with a su suplex. Bailey with smiles and points up at the kendo stick on the pole. Bailey climbs up in the corner for the kendo stick. But Bliss cuts her off. Bliss picks up the kendo stick and smacks Bailey in the back with it. Sending her out to the floor. Bliss stands tall as we, with the kendo stick as the music hits. Back, back to replays. We go to an announcer's hype. Extreme rules on the WWE Network still to come. Reigns versus Rollins match commercial. Back from the break, trainers are taking on Enzo. Amore as it appears that he's been laid out again. Big cast walks up and wonders where the revival is. Kurt Angle says it wasn't the revival. Cass gets upset. Angle says it's all he's also upset because he's also upset because but Cass needs to cal calm down. Angle will help this. Enzo wakes up and tries to recover. Austin Aries and Jack Gallagher versus TJP and Neville. We go to the ring. Out first comes Austin Aries. Jack Gallagher was out next. TJP was out first for his team. And following out was the Cruiserweight Champion Neville. Aries has words with Neville as the bell, bell rings. Neville won't get in, in, 
get into his face him to face him. TJP dabs and taunts Ares, but it backfires as Ares goes to work on him before Gallagher comes in and keep and keeps it up. TJP turns around and takes out takes him to the corner. Neville tags in but runs into a boot from Gallagher. Gallagher with more offense and before taking Neville down with a headlock. Ares gets the tag and faces off with Neville. Ares rallies, but Neville retreats to the floors as we as the fans are booing. Ares and Gallagher stay tall in the ring as we go to commercial. Back from the break, Neville has control of Gallagher. Neville keeps Gallagher grounded as, and taunts Ares as the referee warns him. Gallagher fights back with the headbutts, and, but Neville mocks Ares and shuts Gallagher down. Neville takes his time with Gallagher and tags in TJP. Perkins uh, launched himself over the ropes and covers for a two count. TJP with some offense and t taunts, taunts to Aries as well. TJP keeps Gallagher grounded again in the middle of the ring and his fans, fans try to rally. Perkins with a cheap shot to Aries before going back to Gallagher. Aries comes in and kicks Perkins, but Perkins keeps control of Gallagher, not allowing him to move. Perkins, uh, Counters the move, but Gallagher nails a headbutt, and then they both go down. Aries and Neville tag in at the same time, and they go at it. Aries with a shin breaker before dropping Neville uh, onto his face for a two count. Neville fights off a last chancery attempt. Aries rocks Neville, Neville with, a, with a left. Perkins grabs Aries, lay, leg, and chips him. Gallagher takes out Perkins on the floor. Aries launches Neville out onto Gallagher and TJP. Aries runs the ropes and nails, the, nails all the others on, on the outside. Aries lifts around after the dive. Aries brings Neville back up to the ring. There was a Gallagher takes out Perkins uh, uh, to the floor. Aries launches Neville out on the Gallagher and TJP. Aries runs the ropes and nails the, the others. Aries limps around after the dive. Aries brings Neville back in the ring and goes up to, to goes up to the top. Neville avoids a missile drop kick. Neville goes to the Goes to the ropes but misses the corkscrew 450. Aries goes right into the last chantry for the win. After match, Gallagher and Aries embrace at ringside as Neville and TJP recover in the ring. We're going to replace and come back to Aries and Gallagher taunting the heels from the ramp. So the comes back with Reigns versus Rollins. Back, we go backstage to Reigns with Mike Rome. Reigns just wants one thing to be clear, crystal clear. He doesn't. If it is his best friend or his worst enemy, or if it was be Seth freaking Rollins, no one owns him. Reigns is just out to prove why he's the big dog and why he, this is his yard. As we go to commercial. Back for the break, Charlie Caruso approaches an angry Neville backstage and reminds him that we, he just suffered his first submission loss since joining the Cruiserweight division. He asks if, it, if this worries him by going in in the submission. Match on Sunday at Extreme Rules. Neville just storms off. Coleslaw shows Goldust attack on our truth from the two weeks ago and leads us to another Shattered Dreams production video. Goldust comments on reaching his breaking point and says he's back where he's always belonged, the director's chair. Goldust says our truth knew the truth. That's the Goldust light was too bright for just a supporting role. Goldust goes on to reveal that the Golden Truth picture will be over soon. Their ending won't be a happy or sad. It will be golden. Golden. 
Goldust says the goat rules an age is back. Goldust's feed, feed is interrupted by a U, uh, R Truth Presents video begin. Truth mocking Goldust promo and saying that he's he's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Truth says he's going to shut Goldust's mouth. He's coming to get Goldie. Truth says Goldie is going to get got. Roman vs. Seth. We go to ring out comes Seth Rollins for tonight's main event. Back for the break. Out comes Roman Reigns. They lock up. And Reigns overpower, uh, overpowers first. They size each other up before locking up and trading holds. Rollins with a really roll up for a two count. More back and forth as they trade holds. Rollins takes Reigns down with a standing moonsault for a two count. Reigns goes to the floor for a breather as the fans boo. Reigns takes, takes his time coming back in the ring. They go at it and Rollins blocks and someone will drop. Reigns ends up dropping Rollins with a big right hand for another mixed reaction. Reigns close eyes Rollins over the top rope. Reigns follows it up and sends Rollins to, into the barrier. Reigns positions Rollins on the apron and drives him rib first into the ring post with a drive by. Reigns brings him back into the ring with us and waits in the corner, calling for a spear. Reigns runs into a knee. Rollins close eyes Reigns over the top to the floor. Reigns launches himself over the top to the floor. Rollins returns to the ring and stands tall as we go to commercial. Back when Reigns sends Rollins into the barrier again. Reigns brings it back in the ring and awaits for Rollins to get back up. Reigns whips Rollins hard into the corner and he goes down. Rollins talks Reigns and talks some trash as he awaits for him to get up. Reigns with several big, big shots in the corner. Reigns with running boot to the face as the fans boot. Reigns awaits for Rollins to get up. Rollins blocks the Superman punch with a kick. Rollins keeps fighting and hits the sling blade. Rollins with a running forearm in the corner. Rollins uh, Reigns counters a move. But Rollins comes back and drop kicks him to the floor. Rollins runs the ropes and hits a suicide dive. Rolling. Rollins brings Reigns back in the ring. Rollins brings boards in, but Reigns knocks him out of the air with a Superman punch. Reigns gets a two count. Reigns holds up as the fans boot. Rollins blocks the spear and rolls Reigns into the ring post. Reigns holds up as fan, fans boo. Rollins blocks the spear. Rolls Reigns up for a two count. Rollins kicks Reigns in the jaw. Covers for a close two count. Rollins ends up on the top, but Reigns crotches him. Reigns climbs up for a Superman. Uh, some on one drop, but Rollins slides out. Rollins turns, uh, turns that into a buckle bomb across the ring, but Reigns bounces right out of the corner with a Superman punch. They end up on the floor, and Reigns runs around the ring, but Rollins. Sends him to, into the steel steps. Rollins brings him back into the ring. Nails a blockbuster for a two count. Rollins goes back to the top. Nails a frog splash, but Reigns kicks out at two. As Rollins' his ribs are hurting, fans dueling chance now. Rollins gets up first. Rollins talks the trash before going to the top. Rollins goes for the Phoenix splash, but rolls through. Reigns runs into a kick. Reigns with the right hand. Rollins with an insecurity. Reigns takes the curve stop. And knows a spear for the win. After the match, Reigns still tall as we go to, and recovers as we go to replays. Reigns poses in the corner as announcers hype the fatal five way extreme rules main event for, for this uh, Sunday. Rollins watches Reigns pose in the corner as Raw goes off the air. And that concludes my Raw video for the, uh, for, for the 30th. Thanks again. Peace out. See you on a If you don't know, just call me, brothers and sisters.